Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we're taking a look at a Junt Midrange, a deck full of powerful cards. So like most midrange decks, we have a nice mix of removal spells and powerful threats, and no different here of course. So let's take a look at our 1-drops, starting out with Oath of Nyssa, an enchantment that lets us look at the top 3 cards and select a creature, land or planeswalker and put it into our hand. So this is a nice card that can smooth out our draws. In the early game we might need an extra land, and in the late game we might need some action, so we can select a creature or planeswalker if we revealed any. And also an enchantment that could end up in the graveyard, since it is legendary. So if you play the second copy of Oath of Nyssa, you'll have to sacrifice one of the two copies. So it will end up in your graveyard, and as an enchantment it helps enable Delirium, which we do have a few cards in our deck with Delirium, so it's not a bad card type to have. Next up is a Lightning Axe, single red to deal 5 damage to target creature, but it does come at a cost since we either have to pay 5 mana or discard a card, usually you will be discarding a card, and we don't have any real synergies with Lightning Axe, we're not playing any Madness cards, but our deck has some card advantage built into it, so discarding a card not as bad as it would be otherwise, and being able to deal 5 damage at instant speed for a single red mana is still gonna be worth it, as that allows you to take care of some problematic creatures. Next up is Fairy Impulse, which does not have that drawback of having to discard a card, but only deals 2 damage, or with Spell Mastery 3 damage. Next up is Deathcap Cultivator, which is the Delirium card I alluded to. So as long as you have 4 or more creature types in your graveyard, he gains Death Touch. So that allows him to keep back some attackers from the opponent. But uh, usually you'll just play him on turn 2 as a ramp creature, since he can tap for black or green mana. Which is pretty nice, since that allows you to play your big spells a bit sooner. And also just a 2-1, so it can still get in there and attack for 2. So just a great card to have, and we'll usually bait out a removal spell if you play this on turn 2. Next up is Sylvan Advocate, another great 2 mana creature. Comes out as a 2-3 with Vigilance for 2 mana, which is already not bad. But as long as you control 6 or more lands, he gets plus 2 plus 2, so becomes a 4-5. And all land creatures you control also get plus 2 plus 2, which could come up, so we do have a few lands that turn into creatures, so they will get the bonus as well. So just a great card on turn 2, great card as soon as you hit your 6th land drop, so just a great card in general. Next up is another great card, Duskwatch Recruiter, 2 mana for a 2-2, that has an activated ability that lets us look at the top 3 cards, reveal a creature and put it into our hand, so this is a nice card advantage engine. And then of course it's also Werewolf, with the Werewolf mechanic of transforming if uh, no one played a spell in the previous turn. And then he turns into the Howler, which is a 3-3, which makes your creatures cheaper, and then can also flip back into a human if someone plays two spells in the same turn. So just great synergy with himself and with all our other creatures, since we do have some expensive creatures in the deck that we would not mind to play a bit earlier. Then we also have two copies of Sylvan Ranger, just to fix our mana a little bit, uh, search up a land, and then we can uh, play it to cast our double red or double black spells, for instance. And also just a 1-1 that can block an attack, maybe protect our planeswalkers, but we don't need the full 4 here, just two copies. Then we have another great removal spell here in Grasp of Darkness, a double black, to give a creature minus 4 minus 4 until end of turn, so you can use this as a combat trick to, for instance, take down a 5-5 five five when it blocks, but usually most creatures will just die to this effect, and also gets around indestructibility in a way. If the opponent's creature is indestructible but has 0 or less toughness, it will still die, but there's not a lot of use cases for that, unfortunately. Next up is Nissa Vastwood Seer, oldie but goodie. Comes into play, we get to search for a forest, and when we play our 7th land, she will transform into Nissa Sage Animist, which provides card advantage. So just another great creature. Another great creature is Tireless Tracker. This is kind of a landfall creature in a way, so whenever we play a land, 
we get to investigate in this case, so we get a clue token that we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card, and when we do sacrifice a clue he gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter, so what you usually want to do is play him and a land afterwards in the same turn, so it's not usually a turn 3 play, but if you really have to, he can come out on turn 3, or maybe if you have a death cap cultivator in play you can play him plus a land in the same turn which is nice and if the opponent doesn't deal with him right away he can get out of control pretty quickly drawing you lots of cards and becoming a big threat then we have one copy of read the bones just for that extra bit of card advantage lets us scry for two and then we get to draw two cards at the cost of two life which is not a big deal and can also just help us smooth out our draws a bit, since we are a three-color deck. We also have two copies of Radiant Flames, just to deal with all decks trying to go wide, all the super aggressive decks. Since we do have some high toughness creatures in our deck, Radiant Flames can uh, help us with that. Speaking of which, we have Kalitas, Trader of Gat in our deck, 4 mana for a 3-4 with a lifelink, which is already not bad. And then if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, it gets exiled, and we get a 2-2 zombie token. And then Kalitas can also pay 3 mana to sacrifice a zombie or vampire, in our case only the zombie part is relevant. And then we get to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on Kalitas, so he can sacrifice the zombies he makes to become larger and a large lifelink threat is pretty scary and uh, works very well with Radiant Flames since he will survive the Radiant Flames and you'll get a bunch of zombies for each creature you kill from the opponent and then once you have some spare mana you can start growing Kalitas out of range of some of the removal spells in the format and just works very well with all the removal we have in our deck we can play him turn 5 and then play a Lightning Axe or a Fiery Impulse in the same turn and get a zombie token right away. Another great card is Pia and Kirin Alar, 4 mana for a 2-2 that comes into play with 2 Thopter tokens, and we can sacrifice those Thopter tokens or an other artifact, so that also includes clue tokens for example, to deal 2 damage to a creature or player. So just another great card, 4 power, 4 toughness for 4 mana with some other abilities split amongst multiple creatures. We also have one copy of Mina and Den, Wildborn, 4 mana for a 4-4, that allows us to play additional lands, as well as return a land to our hand to give a creature trample, so this is a way to get lands back into our hand to enable landfall for the tireless tracker, but also can just give a big creature we control trample to get in for some more damage, and can also help us ramp out a bigger threat. Then we get our first Planeswalker here in Arlen Cord, 4 mana for a 3 loyalty Planeswalker that can buff our creatures, make wolf tokens and transform into the werewolf side here which also buffs our creatures in a different way, deals damage and can also ultimate to make our creatures pretty awesome. So just a great Planeswalker in this deck. Since we do have a lot of creatures that can uh, make use of all our buffs, we have one copy of Sage of Ancient Lore, just as another 2 for 1 kind of card. 5 mana for a star star, power and toughness equal to the number of cards in our hand, since we do have a lot of ways to gain card advantage. And then when he enters the battlefield we draw a card, so that's the 2 for 1 part. If the opponent deals with him we still got value. And then he can also transform into the werewolf side, which is even bigger since he also counts the number of cards in the opponent's hand and also gains Vigilance and Trample. Then we're also playing with the Gidrog monster, which is a very interesting card. 5 mana for a 6-6 with Death Touch, which is huge. And the drawback here, if you can call it one, is at the beginning of our upkeep, we have to sacrifice him unless we sacrifice a land. But at the same time, whenever one or more land cards are put into our graveyard from anywhere, we get to draw a card. So essentially, we get to draw an extra card every turn at the cost of sacrificing a land. And if we get to put lands in our graveyard in any other way, like with Evolving Wilds for example, we get to draw an extra card as well. So just a great creature that at the same time also just kills the opponent pretty quickly as a 6-6 with Death Touch. So there's not a lot of cards in the format that can deal with them. 
Then we're also playing one copy of Nissa's Judgment, which I found to be a great card. 5 mana to support 2, so we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target creatures. So you don't get to put 2 counters on 1 creature, but you do get to put uh, 2 counters on 2 creatures, or 1 counter on 1 creature. And then we can choose a creature an opponent controls, and each creature we control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it deals damage equal to its power to that creature. And an interesting thing here is that it also counts the other creatures that have plus one plus one counters we control, so not only the ones we support it onto. So if we have a Tireless Tracker or a Kalitas, for example, with plus one plus one counters, they will also deal a damage to that creature, and in Kalitas's case, gain us some life. So pretty awesome card to buff our creatures and get rid of an opponent's creature at the same time. Then we have another Planeswalker in Obnixilus Reignited, 5 mana, 5 loyalty, draws us cards and destroys creatures, not much to be said here, just a great card. We also have Green Warden of Murasa for those uh, grindy games, can return a card from our graveyard to our hand when we play him, and when he dies we also get to do the same if we exile him. And in a similar vein we also have Beloth Null, which only returns creatures, but does return two creatures right away when we play him, so we don't have to wait for him to die to get the full value. So this is great in our deck, since we have a lot of cheap creatures that are still valuable in the late game, so if the opponent had a way to deal with them in the early game, we still get them back and uh, also get a 4-5, which isn't bad. And finally we also have Chandra Flamecaller, a 6 mana planeswalker with 4 loyalty. Her plus 1 makes 2 3 1 red elemental creature tokens with haste that get exiled at the end of turn. Her 0 ability lets us refresh our draw, and her minus ability is a sweeper effect since she can deal X damage to each creature, so we can uh, make sure to save our creatures while killing the opponents by choosing the right amount. So just another great and versatile card, can get us back one behind with her board sweeper and can close out the game very quickly with her plus one. And then our mana base, three swamps, three mountains and three forests. And then our creature land, Hissing Quagmire, turns into a 2-2 death touch creature and also gets the bonus from the Sylvan Advocate. And then two Smoldering Marsh, two Cinder Glade, and then the check lands to Woodland Cemetery, to Rootbound Crag, to Dragon Skull Summit, and four copies of Evolving Wilds, which has a great synergy with the Tireless Tracker and the Gitrog Monster, while also just fixing our mana and also being a land that can easily end up in our graveyard to enable Delirium. So, just a great card in our deck. So, yeah, that's the deck. And now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, let's take a look at our opener, which looks acceptable. So we can go turn three Radiant Flames if we have to, and then if we draw land, turn four P and Kirin. So it's a bit slow, but we have a lot of two drops in the deck, so I think I'm willing to keep. This is probably gonna get a mountain, so these two come into play untapped. Uh, otherwise we could get a Swamp to get double black um, and this comes into play untapped, we can play this tapped turn 2. I think the odds of us drawing a 2-drop are high enough that I would prefer our lands to come into play untapped. So let's get a mountain. And alright, we drew a cinder glade, so I think I'll just play this tapped. So yeah, I could have gotten a swamp to have access to double black but it's not like we have a ton of double black cards either. So hopefully that doesn't come back to bite us. Opponent on planes, but no turn to play. So that makes it less likely that our opponent is on a an aggressive creature deck. So let's just play Evolving Wilds, get the Swamp, and next turn we can play Piant Kieran, and then we'll go from there. Could have saved Evolving Wilds to go with a Gidrog monster. Alright, so that makes sense. Our opponent has a Knight of the White Orchid, so that's why they didn't play it turn 2. They wanted to get value from it. 
So now that we have more lands than them, they'll get a free planes. So our opponent on black white, all right. Into shadows of the past. So looking to go long and drain us. So let's get our swamp still. And play out Pyrrha and Kirin. Could have also could also wait and try and get value from Radiant Flames. But I think I just want to curve out here. And let our opponent deal with P and Kirin. And then we can play the Gitrog monster. Or the Sage next turn. Could also just use the ability to get rid of the Knight. But the Knight isn't really bothering me. And don't want to give our opponent unnecessary scries. So the attack for two, that's fine. Go to 18. And see what our opponent has here. And a Felder Cub, which can destroy enchantments when sacrificed. So I think I like attacking with everyone. It's fine if our opponent wants to trade. And then we can play a Sage in our second main phase, since I think I want to try and save the Gidrog monster from removal. So we'll present the Sage first and see what our opponent wants to do. So let's attack with everyone and see if our opponent wants to block here, which would be fine if they do. We have a lot of ways to get P and Kieran back from our graveyard, should we want to do so. And now we can play out our Sage, which will draw us a card. So now a 5-5 doesn't die to Languish. And uh, yeah, let's see what our opponent has here. Retreat to Amiria, all right, so they could make a bunch of tokens and give their creatures plus one plus one. Declaration in Stone is a nice answer to our Thopters, instead it's used on our Sage, so we get a clue token. And they decided to make a 1-1 one -one with the Landfall trigger, attack for two. So Radiant Flames is going to be pretty good against all the tokens. And Kalitas as well. So can't quite go Kalitas plus Radiant Flames, but we will be able to next turn. So I don't hate just playing the Gitrog monster. And that also allows us to play an extra land here. So that we can still play Kalitas plus Radiant Flames even if we sacrifice a land. So let's attack for two, play the monster, and then we can also still sacrifice a clue. So play Smoldering Marsh, play Rootbound Crack and pass. Let our opponent deal with the Gidrock monster. And we can draw a card end of turn here. And no attacks. So let's draw a card. Find a Duskwatch Recruiter, which is nice. Sacrifice a land. I think we can get rid of the mountain. Draw an extra card. Interesting. So Lightning Axe discarding a land would also draw us an extra card. But I don't think we'll have to. So let's play out certainly one land here. I think I'm fine just attacking and seeing what happens. Don't really want to play Kalitas yet because that exposes him to uh, a sweeper. 
could also just play the recruiter and use his ability twice, which doesn't sound bad. So maybe we do want to play the swamp in case our monster dies. Attack with everyone. And see what happens. Just a chump. Pun gets to scry. And let's play out our recruiter and keep up two activations. And pass the turn. Another knight, which will still find our opponent an extra planes. But we still have this Radiant Flames, which is good at clearing all those small creatures. Opponent could attack for two, and they do. So we'll just take it. And if nothing else happens, we can use our recruiter. All right, an emissary is fine. And a land to make a 1 1. So let's recruit some creatures here. Alright, Bale of Null is pretty nice. Let's use it once more. And find another recruiter, which is convenient since this one will probably die to our own Radiant Flames. So we'll have to sacrifice a land. I think we can get rid of a swamp. And draw some more cards. All right, so now we can go Kalitas plus Radiant Flames. And I think I'll do that. Well, we could attack first, but a Thopter is gonna get blocked and the Recruiter is gonna get blocked and this one chumped. So we get only in for one damage, while if we sweep first, then we get in for six most likely. So I don't hate going Kalitas into Radiant Flames for the full amount. Which is two apparently, since we did sacrifice that Swamp, maybe tapped our mana incorrectly. But seemed to be enough, and our opponents had enough as well. So three zombies attack for six, put our opponent at eight, and still have plenty of card advantage here. Sylvan Ranger can find an extra land, since we are sacrificing one every turn, but our draw steps can also just find us more lands. And Kalitas with three zombies. Belothnul also a zombie. So also something we can sacrifice to Kalitas. Gidrock monster, a frog horror, so not a zombie. Uh, let's sacrifice a rootbound crag. Draw an extra card. Still no lands, funnily enough. So let's see, your opponent can activate a shambling vents, have three blockers. So, technically they're still alive. We do have a Grasp and a Lightning Axe, however, so... Yeah, that should be enough to uh, just win here with an attack. No need to do anything else. Shambling Vent does indeed become a creature, and before blocks, let's Grasp the Shambling Vent. Lightning Axe by discarding a Read the Bones. And uh, that should do it. Kalitas getting lots of friends. And time to move on to the next game. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which is a bit heavy on the lands here, so let's try another one. Alright, this one I don't mind. Have a nice curve here. And let's play Cinderglade, tapped turn 1, so these come into play untapped. Can play a Cultivator turn 2 or a Recruiter. 
Not sure which one we should play here. Cultivator can lead to a turn 3 Arling Cord, which is nice. Um, can also lead to Tireless Tranker plus play a land and get a clue token right away. The Recruiter, if he transforms, can let us play the Tranker and a land uh, in the same turn since since the tracker will cost one less but I kind of like keeping the recruiter for later so I think just playing the death cap cultivator here is just gonna be better still gives us the option of playing the tracker plus a land next turn or Arlen cord and I uh, can also just attack for two so no need to play the recruiter quite yet all right their opponent on a deck featuring Thing in the Ice, which can transform into the Horror and bounce all our creatures. Don't have a removal spell for it quite yet, but Arling Cord is not bad here. Can make a Wolf Token. Could also go Tracker and get a clue right away because then we can make a 4-powered tracker that can attack into the thing in the ice. Could also play Piant Kirin, so a lot of options. I think putting a Planeswalker in play is not bad. Do want to kind of pressure our opponents so that they can't take full advantage of the thing in the ice. But I think we kind of have to hope to find a removal spell since this is likely to transform anyways. So yeah, let's go with Arlen, since our opponent can't attack her with the creature quite yet. Make a wolf token. And transformer, so next turn we can attack with everyone. And if our opponent blocks with the thing in the ice, we can finish it off with the three damage here. And then next turn we can go tracker plus a land. So our opponent's game plan revolves around transforming the thing in the ice and we kind of have to play around it. Try and kill our opponent before they can flip it or try and find a removal spell to deal with the thing in the ice. We do have Arlen that if she can ultimate could allow us to kill it. But that might be a stretch since her opponent is playing red so if they have any burn spells they could also just deal with Arlen and they could actually deal with her right now if they have a fiery temper which they do all right so that could have been a reason to play something else but uh, we weren't quite sure what our opponent was playing so can't really threaten to kill the thing in the ice here but I'm still going to attack with both Since our opponent is likely to have sweepers in their deck, so I don't want to play Tireless Tracker plus the Squatch Recruiter here. Instead I'm just going to play the Tracker and play a land to get a clue token. And then if our opponent has Radiant Flames we still got a clue. And next turn we can go the Squatch Recruiter plus use the ability. Alright, Oath of Chandra can kill our tracker but does not remove an ice counter from the thing in the ice since it's an enchantment and not a instant or sorcery well we drew evolving wild to turn late would have been nice with the uh, tracker so here yeah i think i like playing recruiter plus a land to then be able to use the ability Can't quite play Piant Kiran and use the ability in the same turn. So your opponent does block and take two. And let's go ahead and play the Recruiter plus a Forest. So we can use the ability. If we find an untapped land, we could play Piant Kiran and 
activate them to deal 2 damage. Opponent playing Sphinx's tutelage. So if that's their win condition now, they don't seem to have a lot of instants and sorceries for the thing in the ice. Green Warden is not bad, can get us back both Arlin or the Tireless Tracker. And Radiant Flames means we do have a way to kill the thing in the ice if our opponent blocks one of our two-part creatures, but that also means losing all our creatures, so that's not great. So uh, I don't think we'll be Radiant Flamesing anytime soon. Instead, we could play Green Warden, get back the Tracker or Arlen. So that means not attacking with the Cultivator. But I kind of like playing Green Warden more than P and Kieran here, since uh, P and Kieran do die to a Radiant Flames while Green Warden does not. And if your opponent has an Outburst, then we get another card back from the Green Warden. So let's attack with these two. See if our opponent wants to block. Alright, they do, and take two down to 14. And then we can play Green Warden. And I think we'll get back Arlen, since a deck revolving around Sphinx's tutelage might have a hard time dealing with Planeswalkers. Play the Evolving Wilds. Don't have to sacrifice it quite yet. If our opponent has a Planar Outburst, we can get back the Tracker. And then uh, the Evolving Wilds can get us another clue. Instead, they have another Sphinx's Tutelage. So let's go ahead and sacrifice the Wilds to find another land. And our opponent on the full-on mill plan here, which does make cards like Green Warden a bit better. So we can play Arling Cord. We can plus her, which allows us to attack with all our creatures. Our opponent blocks, takes 6 plus 5, 11. And then next turn we could PN Kiran, use the ability and kill them. Also, if Arlencore transforms, can give all our creatures plus 1, plus 1 and trample, which would make it a lot better for us to raid in flames, because then we don't lose our creatures while still killing the thing in the ice. So yeah, let's play Arlencord here. And then leave up an activation from the recruiter. So let's plus on, I guess, the... Well, let's plus on the wolf, since if your opponent has a 1 mana removal spell, then uh, that's not that bad if the wolf dies. Attack with everyone. And opponent will block the cultivator, which doesn't have delirium quite yet. If we left Arlingcord in the graveyard, the cultivator could have had death touch. Opponent takes a bunch of damage down to 3. Probably should have played our land there anyways, just to be able to use the recruiter if our opponent had a removal spell for him. We get milled for a bunch. Our opponent kind of needs a way to remove all those ice counters from the thing in the ice right away. Pour over the pages could be scary for opponent. Finds a bunch of cheap madness cards that they can discard, but also triggers all the tutelages a bunch of times. And looks like they did find a madness card, nagging thoughts, so they can draw a bunch more, but uh, doesn't even trigger the. All right, let's activate the Recruiter. 
opponent with two fiery impulses. Missed on the recruiter. And another fiery impulse. Which means the horror does flip. So your opponent did have the two one mana instants there, which is surprising, given that they didn't last turn. We get milled for a bunch and Arlen is gonna die to this horror. Alright, I did not expect this to happen. But our opponent is at 3 life with P and Kiran. So it shouldn't be too difficult to finish off our opponent. But things did take a turn for the worse. Alright, never mind. We're just gonna play Chandra plus her and that's gonna be game. Yeah, our opponent certainly with an interesting deck. But it was not meant to be, even though they did find the two tutelages and managed to flip the thing in the ice. We'll have to move on to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which looks a little bit slow, but also not terrible. We have some interaction for the early game, then Mina and then into Sage. Um, but most of our lands will come into play tapped, which I think is a reason to try another one. Alright, this is much better. We can go Duskwatch Recruiter on 2, Sylvan Ranger get a Mountain, play Arling Cord on 4. So let's lead with Hissing Quagmire. Opponent on Blue Red. And no turn to play, could have some instants they can play on our turn. Cinder Glade is interesting, so we can go basic basic into Cinder Glade. So let's play our Swamp, play Duskwatch Recruiter, see if our opponent has an answer to it. They have a Twin Bolt, which is fine. So next turn we can go Silver Ranger get a Mountain. Or we can go Duskwatch Recruiter play Sinner Glade tapped. And we would still be able to play Arling Cord. Or we could go Silver Ranger Mountain, which would allow us to play Pian Kiran next turn instead. Our opponent looks to be a controlling deck, could be holding up a counter spell. In which case I would rather run out the Silver Ranger than the Recruiter. Also don't really want to expose the Recruiter to removal. I would prefer to play him turn 5 and activate him right away to get some value. So yeah, I think playing Silver Ranger gets a Mountain seems fine. So next turn we have the option of playing P and Kiran if we want to. And if your opponent had a counter spell, they didn't get to use their mana efficiently. Still looks like they are holding on to something. So we could play Pian Kiran and get them countered. If it's the counter spell that exiles, it would be pretty unfortunate because then we can't get them back with a Green Warden. So I think we start by attacking for one. Don't really want to risk activating the Quagmire and losing it. So let's get in our point of damage. Think I'm fine with playing Pian Kiran here, since her opponent might have a harder time answering Arlin. So, alright, it's broken concentration, so they just go to the graveyard. And uh, on turn 6 we will be able to get them back if we want to. Opponent still keeping up all sorts of instants, but they did find land number 4. So let's go ahead and attack for 1 again, and then we can play the recruiter. Plus activate it if it doesn't get countered. 
play our land first here just in case our opponent has the counter unless you pay three comparative analysis is fine opponent draws two cards Land number five, Geist Blast. Trying to kill the recruiter. So we'll recruit some creatures. Find a Sylvan Advocate, which is nice. With our land here means that he will get plus two plus two. And find another land. All right, so opponent only two mana now means they won't have a counter spell for Arlin, and they also won't have a counter spell for Green Warden. So I kind of like playing Arlin plus Sylvan Advocate here. So let's attack for one. Play out Arlin Cord. and can make a wolf and then play Sylvan Advocate could have also played Sylvan Advocate and uh, then given it plus two plus two vigilance and haste but looks like our opponent did have a counter spell in horribly awry and now they're gonna play a Chandra which can make the two elementals so Chandra can kill Arlin, but instead decided to just remove our creatures, which is interesting because now we can just kill Chandra. So it looks like a misplay to me. But uh, I guess her opponent would have lost Chandra either way. So we can definitely do this. And then play Green Warden, get back the Recruiter, or play Green Warden, get back P and Kieran. Both seem fine. Um, kind of like getting back the Recruiter more, since we do have a lot of mana and not a lot of action in our hand. So let's play Green Warden, get back the Recruiter. and play Evolving Wilds, which we might as well fetch right now. Get another red source. So next turn we can play Recruiter, and then plus Arlin to give it plus two plus two Vigilance and Haste if we want to. Now have a threat in play that's hard to deal with, and if your opponent does deal with it, we will get some more cards back. Exquisite Firecraft to kill Arlen Cord, plus her opponent uses Geist Blast to copy it, killing the Green Warden, so now we'll get back Pian Kirin. Alright, so her opponent did have the answers, but now we still have two threats in hand, which we can resolve. So we can go Duskwatch Recruiter plus Recruit two creatures, which I think I like more than exposing both creatures to removal. So we could recruit once here, which we might as well do in case we find a creature we want to play right now. Should have left up maybe red mana. Well, we missed on our first recruit. Hopefully we hit on our second. We do have a lot of creatures we can find. Another Geist Blast to kill our recruiter. Let's try to hit. Still missed. Well, that's unfortunate. So now we're left with a Piant Kirin and a Hissing Quagmire. And our opponent still has a Geist Blast in the graveyard. Another draw two. 
So our opponent has a pretty sweet blue-red control deck going on here. So we can play Pia and Kieran and activate his and Quagmire, which is kind of the same as keeping up Pia and Kieran in response to a sweeper since we still get in for two damage. So might as well get in for two damage for sure. Put her opponent at 15 and let them answer P and Kiran. And I think we're at a point where I want to keep my lands in hand in case we draw a tireless tracker to enable landfall. Could regret it if I draw an expensive spell. So maybe it was right to play one land and keep the other in hand. Opponent has a Twin Bolt and is gonna copy it with Geist Blast to also kill our Thopters. So still only a 1 for 1 trade. But looks like they might have misclicked on the Thopters here and only killed one of them. Another P.N. Kirin is not bad. So let's see, we can activate the Quagmire and still play Pian Kirin. So let's do that. Opponent could have removal for our land, but so be it. Go to 12, play Pian Kirin. And I think I'll play one land here. And hope our opponent doesn't have a Radiant Flames to sweep the board. Another analysis to draw to, so I think they're looking for a Radiant Flames here. But looks like they didn't find one. Instead another Twin Bolt to kill Pian Kirin. And instead we find more lands. Alright, let's get in there for five. Our best draw at this point is probably a Baloth Null or a Chandra. Um, I guess we'll still play a land in case we do draw one of those recursion cards or if we find a draw spell like a Recruiter or a Read the Bones, then we might need all our mana. Opponent with a Jace, scry one and draw a card. And we find Obnixilus, which might bait out a counterspell. So I don't think we're attacking Jace, because it takes a lot to kill him. And their opponent is at 7, so I think I like activating the Quagmire here. And hopefully their opponent taps out to kill one of our creatures, in which case we can resolve Obnixilus. And there's Fiery Impulse. Opponent takes three. Down to four. Play Obnixilus to draw a card. And their opponents can't really threaten it in any way. And I think we play out the Cultivator since her opponent didn't seem to have a Radiant Flames last turn. Might have found one with the Jace in the meantime. They're gonna bounce the Cultivator, all right, that's good news. Means that they can't answer the Thopter tokens. Kidrock Monster is a nice one, but let's draw a card first. Chandra is just going to be game if her opponent doesn't have a counter spell, so I think we'll play her. Opponent does have a counter spell, but is going to go down to one here, and we're just going to replay the cultivator. And leave up the grasp, I guess. 
bone to ash to counter the cultivator but they still need to find an answer to the thopter tokens and Obnixilus also getting close to ultimating and their opponent doesn't have any creatures in play to deal any damage but they might have burn spells to reduce loyalty but looks like our opponent did not find the answers and instead we found our copy of Radiant Flames Baloth Null so it would have been able to return two creatures let's see if it resolves just out of curiosity it does get back Recruiter Pian Kieran even tapped my mana wrong since we can't play Pian Kieran here and this attack should do it all right i want to thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this gameplay and as always have a nice day